The pinnacle of gaming performance. That's how Respawn describes their Spire gaming chair. The chair is $500, so this might be a bold claim, but there are quite a few features on the Spire that are uncommon on gaming chairs. One of them might be something that makes this chair a must buy for a lot of you. The Respawn Spire went together quickly. They chose the Secret Lab route with a proper poster board, easy to follow instructions, and a convenient tool set. Overall, it took me about 15 minutes in total with no hiccups. The packaging on this chair is good, there was no damage, and I would expect this to be the norm. Taking the chair parts out of the box gave me high hopes. The problem is that this is exactly how I felt when I was taking the Lenovo Legion parts out of that box, and we know how that went. But the seat in the back on the Respawn felt substantial, and the backrest really caught my eye because of the rubber-like material with soft jacket covering. I also saw that the back didn't have side bolsters, and I was really starting to feel like this could be a solid gaming chair option in that $500 price range, which I feel is desperately needed for the category. After getting it all together, I really liked the look of the Spire. It has more of an ergonomic chair vibe with obvious gaming branding, but I like the way they did it. I think that it really catches your eye with the color combo, the R and the mesh, and I think that it's a cool chair for people that want something that looks like an obvious gaming chair but don't like the racer vibe. If you want to fast track your search, check out our list of the most comfortable chairs down in the description. The seat is probably going to be the best bucket seat I've used, and that's without knowing yet how well that gel cooling system works, which could be an absolute game changer. This might be one of the biggest reasons why Respawn calls this the pinnacle of gaming performance. The Spire chair doesn't have soft side bolsters like the Titan Evo, which is a bummer, but the seat pad itself has decent softness, and most importantly, you get a seat slider. This is the first bucket style seat I've seen with seat depth adjustment, and this makes a world of difference. One of the biggest problems I have with gaming chairs, like that Titan Evo, is that the seat doesn't fit me properly. On the Evo, the seat is too deep, making the back of my legs rub up against the seat, but on chairs like the S Racer, the seat is too shallow, not giving me proper support. Being able to put the seat in the perfect spot is huge. While I do like the seat pad and the seat depth, it is a bucket seat by nature, so you do have those hard side bolsters, and it's a very rigid seat from a flexibility standpoint. My initial impression is that this is going to top the list of bucket style seats, but it will fall a bit short of higher end ergonomic chairs, which does make sense considering the $500 price point. One thing I do want to make sure that you know is that you need to be relatively slim to use this seat comfortably. I know the weight rating is 300 pounds, but the side bolsters make the seat narrow, so keep that in mind. For me, the backrest is the highlight of the chair. For starters, it doesn't have any pronounced side bolsters like racing chairs. This allows for a much larger range of movement to stretch in the chair and doesn't make the chair feel so rigid and restrictive. It also has a nice S shape, which is better for keeping your back properly supported as compared to the flat back designs we see on almost every single racing chair. While the Spire doesn't have an adjustable lumbar system, I don't think it needs it, especially for my preferences. The backrest shape and materials chosen are a great combo. The rubber-like honeycomb backrest is really flexible and reminds me a lot of the Null Regeneration. It conforms to your back without being hard or pokey. On top of the rubber-like material is a fabric mesh jacket. This jacket really gives the back a layer of softness and helps with that overall comfort. While this jacket is great, it may be the weak point of the entire chair. I don't think that this is the best design in terms of holding the jacket in place on the backrest. The jacket on our chair has come off a couple times just from us using the chair and reclining back. This doesn't ruin the chair, but it can be difficult to get the mesh back into the tracks and it feels impossible to get it back to the way that it was when it first arrived. The headrest is nice, but I question whether it's going to be a nuisance or not. I like the materials used, very similar to the backrest, it also looks sleek, and the adjustments are good but I could feel it slipping down when I was using it for the first time. When I reclined back, it would click down. Hopefully I can find a middle ground to be able to use it when I'm moving around in the chair because I do really like everything about the headrest. The arms on the Spire may be the highlight of the entire chair for some of you, but not for the reason that you might think. From an adjustment and comfort standpoint, they're mediocre. The pads have some softness to them, but they won't wow you. You get height and depth adjustment, and the ranges are okay, but one adjustment you do get, which is something we get asked about quite frequently now, is the ability to flip the armrests back and completely out of the way. And they don't flip and stay up like some chairs like the Hanami, they literally flip back and completely out of the way. This allows the chair to be used in so many more applications, like playing a guitar, which again, we get asked about a ton. So for you guitar players, this could be your sleeper pick.
One area where the spire may fall a bit short for some is going to be the recline, but that's only if you truly do want to lay flat and take a nap, like a lot of people say that they do in their gaming chairs. Instead of that flat back recline style you get on racing chairs, the spire has a more ergonomic recline with three different locking positions, including fully upright lock. While the recline is a bit hip thrusty for my liking, and the range isn't going to be anywhere near a racing chair, I think it's actually a better option for both general comfort and from an ergonomic standpoint compared to the center tilt and the independent back angle you get on a standard racing chair. The Spire chair is not perfect and being the pinnacle of gaming performance may be a stretch, but I really applaud Respawn for creating something for gamers in a different way. The jury is still out on the cooling gel seat, but I love the flip back arms and the backrest design is really cool. This is one of the rare gaming chairs in that $500 price range that I'm actually excited to try for a few weeks. If you want to see an entire list of chairs ranked by comfort, check out the cheat sheet in the description.